Hey guys, Saturday with Kayak Bass Fishing, and welcome back to today's video where we are, well, we, where she found your questions in the community tab, and we're doing what we like to refer to affectionately as Christie's Questions. So we've rambled in a few of these videos, and we've covered a lot of ground, and I think that that's beneficial to everybody. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put it to Christy that you've got one more question. All right, so this time we're gonna keep it limited to one question. So, all right, woman, you got one more question. Let's hear it, and we're gonna cover this one thoroughly, and then we're gonna be out of here so they can get back to fishing. Okay, it's from Old Lady Angler, and she asks, it's my first year, so I'd love to hear things rookies should know. So I think being a rookie, it's something I can at least start to answer. Um, I'm not exactly sure if she's asking about tournament fishing. Or just Wait, isn't Old Lady Angler like a guy that uses his account, but it's his wife's account or something like that? Because I think I've seen him say he's not a, I don't know. Old lady angler, are you an old lady? Or are you a guy <laughs> using your old lady's account? Yeah. Clarify that in the comment section so we'll know how to refer to you affectionately. I do appreciate your support. I see you in the comment <laughs> section all the time. I do recognize the name. But if memory serves me correctly, I think, I think she said she's a he. I think he's, I think it's a guy using a woman. Anyway, they, let, let us know. Old lady we'll say English, she for now. They ask about rookie stuff. So since I'm a rookie, I think it's good that I can answer this. And I can give you my first little tidbit of knowledge that when I first started fishing gave me confidence <laughs> as he walks out the frame. So I went to a basketball game the other night and it was rough. Like the team that was playing had no confidence whatsoever and because they had no confidence they couldn't make a goal they couldn't pass the ball correctly nothing was working and so when I first started kayak fishing the very first thing that I knew I had to have was confidence so the way to get confidence is to catch a fish obviously so Chad makes fun of me all the time for this other anglers make fun of me all the time for this so my thing that I have to use to get confidence on the water is my go-to lure. If I can catch a fish, I have confidence again. And then I can switch it up and start using different presentations and different lures and trying different things. But until I have that confidence, I'm just no good on the water. I'm still young enough in my kayak fishing career, experience, whatever you would call that, that I have to have some confidence. So my go-to lure, and again, Chad makes fun of me, Gene Jensen Fluke Master makes all kinds of fun of me for this. Um, it is a Yamamoto Cinco. My preferred and favorite color is blue with uh, black with blue fleck. And I affectionately refer to this as my good butt jeans. So I don't know if guys understand this as much, but girls definitely do. When you want to look good and you want to be successful and you want to have some confidence, um, you put on good butt jeans. And if you think your butt looks good, you walk around with more confidence, your shoulders are back, your head's high, and you think you can conquer the world. Well, my Cinco is my good butt jeans. Now, I've been fishing with Fluke Master and Chad, and Chad was trying to make me do this other lure and use this other presentation and they weren't catching fish. They caught no fish all day. I hadn't caught a fish all day and I finally said, forget it. I'm grabbing my rod with a Cinco on it. I throw the Cinco, I catch a fish, I won the day. I had confidence. I still have confidence from beating Fluke Master and Chad fishing and I did it with a Cinco. So it's okay if people make fun of you. If it's something that gives you confidence and you can catch a fish on it and then you can move to a different type of lure, a different presentation, use it. Now, if there's girls out here watching, y'all know your good butt jeans are only better with a good pair of high heels. So if I'm having a really bad day and I really have no confidence, I use the Cinco with Cox juice on it because there is nothing better than putting on your jeans with some high heels and strutting around and feeling good. You put cox juice on your Cinco and you're definitely gonna catch a bass. So I'm just telling you, get some confidence, use what you feel good about, use what you know, and then you can start using some other things and trying some other things. All right, so let me just uh, jump in here real quick because she did a good job, all right? She did a good job and 95% of what she said is, is intuitive, okay? But I do wanna make the point counterpoint. Okay, first and foremost, she never even gets a bag of Cinco's that don't have some cox juice on it. Cause I take every bag of Cinco's that I give her and I squirt a little bit of cox juice on there, rub it in and I let it marinate, all right? What she means is 
is she's physically adding the cox juice to it. And those little things like that, that make you feel like the fish is gonna bite, make you more confident, make you more focused and give you that renewed sense of encouragement. So even though she knew, or she doesn't know it's on there, she does now, uh, I'm th that's my little secret weapon for her, is uh, you throw some of that you know, scent on there, it gives you that what you feel like is a competitive advantage. Now let's talk about the philosophy that she said. Now, one of the ways that guys like myself and Fluke Master, which beating Fluke Master ain't no big deal. I mean, I do that pretty much every time we go fishing. So um, anyway, Poor Jim. Poor Jim. <laughs> no, but, but here's the thing. The reason a guy like that and, and, the, and the reason I personally do it is we're willing to go a day without catching a fish is we know we could catch a fish with a Cinco. Catching a fish with a Cinco doesn't really do anything for our confidence because we throw a Cinco on, we cast out there, we catch a fish, and we're like, yeah, okay, cool, we caught a fish on a Cinco. So there's a certain you know, bell curve of intersection of experience when you don't do things that you know if you're trying to figure out things that you don't know. But this question and was for rookies. I get it. So, But for rookies, one of the things that you can do to learn is you can experiment with new things. And when you go back and you default to something that you already know, it's a lot like if you're trying to learn how to cast with your dominant hand or your non-dominant hand, you go automatically back to your, your dominant hand. You're not developing that muscle memory. So one of the things that I'll encourage a lot of rookies to do is early on get outside your comfort zone. Because when you get outside your comfort zone and you find even small modicums of success, okay? Now, Christy doesn't really understand this because she's got a sensei every time she goes out on the water. She's got, literally, she's got the benefit of my experience. And so some of the things that she does is tempered by the, that, that interaction. And maybe you guys don't have that benefit, except for the fact that with you being here and you're using the community tab and you're asking questions, you do have the benefit of that experience. But let me talk about that for a second. Because a lot of times I will take the right lure at the right time in the right place and I'll paddle up to her and I'll hand it to her and say, cast that to that treetop. Boom, she catches a fish on it. But because I did that, when I knew it was gonna work, where it was gonna work, why it was gonna work, how it was gonna work, I'm robbing her of the time that she would paddle around for hours throwing that lure with it not working. What you also don't learn in that regard is you don't learn to have that hair stand up on the back of your neck when all the conditions align that that's what you should go to when somebody else gives it to you. So you continuously default back to your go-to, your safety, your good butt jeans. And I'll just say this, she is wearing her good butt jeans today. When she walked in, I was like, damn girl. I didn't know that they had a thing like that until I met this woman. I thought girls thought like every pair of jeans they had on, you know, cause you see them glide across the floor and maybe some girls got multiple good butt jeans and I maybe like depending on how good your butt is you can't have bad butt jeans shit I don't know I have multiples but I have my favorites anyway so that is what it's all about it's about confidence so if you've got to go out there and maintain your confidence by sticking with something you know that's great but what I will tell you is this she got that confidence because she had somebody show her how to teach, show her how to fish a Cinco like a ninja. There's plenty of people that post videos that I've never caught a fish on a Cinco. Now, if you don't catch a fish on a Cinco, I don't really know how to help you because you almost can't fish it wrong. You could throw it over your head backwards and reel with the wrong hand, holding the rod with the wrong hand and catch a fish on a Cinco. But I get it. So because that's what I use to build her confidence early on, it's her go-to, it's her default, it's her comfort zone. Here's what I tell you, and this will be the parting shot for this video. Once you're at the point where it is your good butt jeans, when you know you look good in it, when it is the thing that gives you your confidence, that's the time to move on. That's the time to add something else to the arsenal because you already know this is going to work. <laughs> you already know. You don't need to confirm this is going to work. You already have that in your arsenal. So if I'm talking to any rookie out there, if I'm talking to every rookie out there, if you want to become a better angler, if you want to be that guy that is in the top 10% that's catching, you know, because 90% of the fish are caught by 10% of the fishermen in a lot of cases, then you have to get outside your comfort zone. The earlier that you start getting outside your comfort zone, the faster you'll expand your comfort zone. Cause then you'll have your good butt jeans. You'll have your sundress. You'll have your sweatpants. See, because women don't realize this about us. Like we think them sweatpants walking around the house with a t-shirt on and your hair pulled back is just as sexy as them good butt jeans. You just don't. But anyway, so you'll add all that stuff to your arsenal. So my takeaway from this and my kind of compounding on the, the point she so eloquently made 
is that once you have confidence in something so well that you know it'll work, that's when it's time to expand your horizons. Know that you got that in your box. And at any time, if you need to catch a fish, you don't have to guess. She don't even have to tie that on to confirm that it works to build her confidence. So a guy like myself, a guy like Gene, you know, and some of the top anglers in the country, the reason that we're willing to spend a whole day not catching a fish is because we're trying to learn. We're trying to get better. We're trying to figure things out. And we figure those things out so we can share them with you. It doesn't give us any level of confirmation, gratification, or confidence to tie on something that we know is going to work. And that's why a lot of people are less confident in something like that. My Cinco is a Ned Rig, okay? I don't need to tie on a Ned Rig. I pretty much know I could throw a Ned Rig out there, bump that little sucker along the bottom, let it sit, and I'll catch a fish. So it doesn't really give me anything. Now, if I was fishing a tournament and I had to catch fish, I'd tie a Ned Rig on as much as I'd rather. I want to say something about that. Okay, what? Every day fishing with him is a tournament. So when I'm throwing a Cinco to catch a fish, yeah, it's always a tournament. So he can talk the game all he wants to, but at the end of the day, I won that day because I went to my confidence lure. Okay, and I won you're the right. Day. And you know what it really boils down to? If you had a good time on the water, if you enjoyed yourself, if you learned something, or if you walked away with a smile on your face, we all won, okay? One thing that I'm gonna give you as a takeaway is that sev several different types of people consider different things successful. I literally left that water that day and I let her win and she gloated all the way home. Yeah, I got more busy than you. I got more busy than both of you, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of that day, I went home Have and I seen figured out what I, I could so. do different. I dissected it, I didn't sleep. And then the next time I went to that place, she was home at her desk working. I caught 42 fish, had a blast, put out six videos from it, yada, yada, yada. That so the win, never made it out of the archives. So the now. win <laughs> is what happens in the end, okay? So it's a matter of what you're trying to take away from it. If you want to become a better angler, you have to get outside your comfort zone because that makes a new window for your comfort zone. So I want to say to anyway. old, old lady angler. Um, yeah, just comment below and let us know. Yeah, but I want to say, like, obviously that does not answer even probably a tenth of the questions on how Ricky gets started. But having something that gives you some confidence is a big part of it. And it could be a lure, it could be your favorite paddle, it could be your favorite PFD, it could be a good luck charm in your PFD. Whatever it is, yeah. just get something that gives you some confidence. And I want to also promise you that we're going to continue with this video series type and bring more things that are going to help Ricky get started. The initial response was amazing, but don't be afraid to ask very specific questions about a specific presentation, how to fish it, when to fish it, where to fish it. And some of those things I can dial in and give you guys better feedback. So great response in the first round of questioning. Love you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Did you ask him to subscribe? You keep forgetting. <sighs> Y'all need to subscribe. Subscribe. And turn on the notifications like more so than anything else. we got 60,000 subscribers and we get a thousand views on some of our videos. Turn on your notifications so you'll yep. know when we release a new video. And then you can watch it when you get home. All right, we love y'all. See you love later. Bye. Why is this bottle of Cox juice so dirty? That is nasty. <laughs> it's so gross. This is the dirty Cox juice version. That is, so, that is nasty, <laughs> Chad. That is so bad. By the way, we're still recording. Hey, mm -mm, cut that out. Mm. Don't put that on camera. Or don't We're put not it putting it on camera. It's on camera. Don't, it's gonna don't be put the, it on the video. We're going to put it on the video. No, that's not good. That's good. That's nasty. You literally just said dirty Cox juice on camera. That's you think so... that's not ending up in the video? Take it out. <laughs> that's not good. Uh, all right. We'll see you next time. Woo-wee.